1994, John Nash, together with John Hoshani and Reinhard Selten, was awarded the Nobel Prize for Economics for their analysis of equilibria in the theory of games. John Nash's contribution was to develop and work with the solution concept of what we nowadays call a Nash equilibrium. A key part of this was a seminal theorem that states that every game has a Nash equilibrium. This is part of what makes the concept so interesting. Other solution concepts such as the elimination of dominated strategies or pure Nash equilibria do not work for some games. Some games neither have any dominated strategies, nor have any pure Nash equilibria. I will now show you the proof of this Nobel Prize worthy theorem. And once we already know about Brauer's fixed point theorem, it does not even take a lot of time to go through this proof. So let's start. Again, Nash's theorem simply states that every game has a Nash equilibrium. And I will only show you the proof for two players because the notation is a bit simpler. But the proof for more players works in exactly the same way and there are no new ideas uh, in there. So what is the main idea behind this proof? The main idea is to simply construct a function f that has the property that the fixed points of that function correspond to the Nash equilibria of the game. And of course we can then just use Brouwer's fixed point theorem to know that this function must have a fixed point and therefore the game must have a Nash equilibrium. So we use x as a strategy for player 1 and let y be a strategy for player 2. Now what is the expected payoff that player 1 gets? Well, we have seen this before. This is just x transposed a y, where a is the payoff matrix of player 1 uh, for this game. And now we can, in fact, see what the different expected payoffs are for all the different pure strategies of the first player. And for this we just multiply a and y, and this gives us a vector, and each entry of this vector gives us the expected payoff for each of the pure strategies of the first player. So this is just a y, and then we take the ith entry in that vector that tells us if player 1 is playing strategy i, what is the expected payoff uh, the player would be getting. And now what we can look at is the difference between these two things. So for each pure strategy of player 1, we look at the difference between the payoff that the player would be getting under this pure strategy and the expected payoff the player is getting with this mixed strategy x. And the payoff that the player gets for strategy i would be either higher or lower or the same as the expected payoff uh, the player gets when playing mixed strategy x. What we are interested in is whether the player could somehow improve the payoff by switching to the strategy i instead of playing the strategy x. So how much bigger could the payoff be if we switch to that strategy? And this is exactly what this difference is telling us. If this difference is positive, uh, we would improve by switching to strategy i, and if the difference is not positive, then there would be no improvement. And we are only interested in pr improvements. I'm not interested in seeing how much worse the payoff would get, so we take the maximum of this change of payoff if we switch from x to this pure strategy i, uh, and 0. So we cut this off at 0. And let's give this a name. So we call this ki of x and y. And so how much, if at all, would player 1 uh, improve by switching to pure strategy i? So now the next idea is the following. We start with this mixed strategy x. So we have a probability 
to play each pure strategy that's indicated by the entries in this vector x. And now, if one particular pure strategy would actually increase my payoff by a lot, I should probably should play that particular strategy with a higher probability, right? So what we do is we just um, try to increase the probability for the pure strategies that give us a higher expected payoff than our current mixed strategy. So we simply take this vector x and to each component we add this ki xy value. So we have x1 and we just add to that k1 of xy. So how much more payoff we would be getting by switching to the first pure strategy. And we do this for all the components until we reach the last component. And this gives us a new vector. Now, there's a slight problem here. So this new vector is not a probability distribution anymore because we've just been adding numbers to different components. So the entries now do not sum up to one anymore. They would probably sum up to something larger. And to make this a probability again, uh, we simply divide the vector, we normalize this vector, by dividing by the sum of all the entries. So the sum over all the xl values, and then the sum over all the kl of x and y values. And when we do this normalization, we guarantee that the resulting vector now has uh, its component adding up to 1 again. Now we can slightly simplify this because the sum over all the xl values, remember that x was a mixed strategy, so this was a probability distribution. And so all these entries must sum up to 1, so we can just replace the sum over all xl by 1. This gives us a new mixed strategy, the purpose of which is maybe not entirely clear at this point. It seems somewhat arbitrary, but we certainly can define it in this way. And we can give this a name, let's just call it g of x and y. And now I'm going to prove a fact about g of x and y. And the fact is the following. g of x and y equals x implies that the sum over all these kl values must be zero. Okay, So if by doing this modification of our mixed strategy, we didn't actually change the mixed strategy, we end up with the same mixed strategy we started out with, then it must be the case that all the kl values sum up to zero. Now, here's the proof for this fact. If there is an i, like a pure strategy i, such that xi is not equal to zero. So we play this pure strategy with a strictly positive probability. And at the same time, this ki entry is equal to zero. So switching to that pure strategy does not give us any improvement over the mixed strategy x. Then the following must be the case. xi plus ki of x and y divided by 1 plus the sum over all kl values. And this is just the ith entry of the vector g of x and y. And this is equal to xi. And this must be true because if g of x and y is equal to x, then each of the entries must be equal. But then it follows because ki we assume should be 0 that xi divided by 1 plus the sum over all kl values is equal to xi. And this implies that the sum over all kl values must be equal to 0. Because on the left hand side we have xi divided by something that's 1 or bigger than 1. And on the right hand side we just have xi. So really the denominator on the left hand side must be equal to 1. And so the sum of all kl values must be zero. Now, what if we don't have any such i where xi is not equal to zero and ki is equal to zero? Well, in that case, 
for all i, for which xi is not equal to zero, we actually have that ki is strictly positive. And, and this means that this difference between the expected a payoff when playing strategy i and the expected payoff when playing mixed strategy x must be positive. And so the player could actually improve by switching to this pure strategy i rather than playing the mixed strategy x. So if you write down a formula for this, we would say that the ith entry of a y is strictly bigger than x transposed a y. But then we get a contradiction. And this is the contradiction. We start with x transposed a y. And this is equal simply of the definition of how these vector matrix products work. Uh, the sum over all L of XL times AY and then the Lth component of that. And now we use what we previously learned about the relationship between AYI and uh, X transposed AY. So we just plug this inequality in and we get that uh, this is bigger than the sum over all uh, L of XL times X transposed AY. And X transposed AY doesn't even depend on L, so we can just pull it in front of the sum and we get X transposed AY times the sum over all XL. And the sum over all XL, we already have learned that uh, that is just equal to one. So this is just equal to X transposed AY. So where's the contradiction? Well, the contradiction is we have x transposed a y on the left and we have x transposed a y on the right, but we have a strict inequality in between. And so that cannot happen. And this is the entire proof of this fact. Now we are almost done with the proof of Nash theorem, in fact. So if the sum over all KL values is equal to zero, it means in particular that every single one of them must be equal to zero. And this is because none of them are negative. We always took the maximum of some term and zero, so all of them are zero or positive. And so if the sum is equal to zero, it means each individual value needs to be equal to zero. And now, what does this really mean if all of those are zero? Well, it means there is no pure strategy for player one that would give player one a higher expected payoff than the mixed strategy X that the player is currently playing. And so for this player, this strategy X must be a best response to the strategy Y of the second player. And what we now do is we just make the same construction for the second player so we define values k prime i of x and y, which indicate how much the second player could improve her expected payoff by switching from strategy y to the pure strategy i that she has. And then we define based on this a uh, new mixed strategy in the same way as we did for player one. Let's call this h of x and y. And of course, the same fact that was true for this function g for player one is also true for the function h for player two. And that means we can just define our function for Nash theorem now. And the function is simply this. It's f of x and y. So we take a mixed strategy profile, a mixed strategy x for player one and a mixed strategy y for player two. And we define this function to be equal to well, the first component will be uh, g of x and y and the second component will be h of x and y. So we map a mixed strategy profiles to mixed strategy profiles. And now because of this fact that we have for g and h we know that the fixed points of f are Nash equilibria because those are exactly the points where both players play a best response 
against the mixed strategy of the other player. According to Brouwer's fixed point theorem, f has a fixed point. For this, of course, we need to verify that f is a continuous function, but this is not too difficult to see. And we also have to check that the domain of the function is indeed a convex compact set. But this is also true, the domain of the function is just the set of all uh, mixed strategy profiles, and that's a convex compact set. And so this function f has a fixed point, and therefore our game has a Nash equilibrium, which just corresponds to a fixed point of this function. So that's the entire proof of Nash's theorem. It's a central part of Nash's PhD thesis, and indeed the thesis is only about 30 pages long, and by page 10, including the cover page and introduction, Nash had introduced all concepts he needed and proved this theorem. If you want, you can find his PhD thesis on the website of the University of Princeton, where his PhD is from. It's an interesting read and includes some nice examples and discussions as well.